All right. Can you guys hear me this morning? Interestingly enough, it's good to see you guys this morning. Here. Whoa. Hey. Um. Everything's good to see everyone. Let me let me know. Everybody here? I'm having some weird there. Okay. I don't know what I played. Good morning. I think you guys can hear me. It's good to see you. We're having some interesting things going on with tech, but it appears that you guys can see me. My voice is a bit on. I'm sure it's better now. Um, okay, we just have some weird stuff. It's not telling me how many people are in the chat. It's kind of weird, so I just got a little bit confused. But I see that there's 18 people in the chat. It appears that you guys can see me. StreamYard's just having some weird things going on. Um, okay. Amy and Echo. The Echo's from my phone. Okay. Okay, we're fine, yeah. The echoes from my phone. There we go. Because it was my phone. There we go. Okay. It's very confusing. I woke up this morning and I was like, wait, what's going on? So let me know. Wanted to get started here. Just getting some nice vibes. Cool. We're good. Thank you, Samo. It's interesting, though. Because um, it's interesting. So we've already got 20 people in the chat I can see from my app, but it's still only telling me that there's one person watching on StreamYard. So that's why I got super confused at the beginning. But let me pause the music here and we can get started on our Starseed reading. So let's just take a deep breath. centers me a bit. It centers me a bit. <clears throat> so we're going to take, <laughs> we're going to take my, my crystals and we're just going to get back to it like we usually do. Um, it's just going to be interesting. Stream out just being a little bit of a bum. All right, well, here we go. We've got my crystals. You're all here. We're going to get started. No more slacking. Okay, we got it all sorted. All right, ready? Three. Deep breath. Okay, interesting energies for sure. So I guess to start with, I'm gonna pull from my... I'm gonna pull from my new deck. Yes, the Rose Oracle. Yes, here she is. I'm gonna pull from the Rose Oracle. So, Spirit, give us peace, give us light, give us love, give us all the things we need to know to reach our highest good today on this day. On this day, March 7th, 2023. It's another big day of disclosure. What do star seeds need to know today to reach their highest self spirit? What do star seeds need to know to reach their highest self today? What do star seeds need to know to reach their highest self spirit? What do star seeds need to know? And we're doing another reading tonight, so don't forget about that. That's like the major monthly meeting reading. Healing the mother line. Whoa. Healing ancestral work, mother line, growing up. So there might be a mother figure in your life. There might be some sort of maternal energy 
in your life associated with you honing in on it, getting that healing, maybe tuning into a healing maternal energy, um, maybe someone in your life that you love and you care about, and also looking into that um, that inner child inside of you. That's another component of this. So that's a beautiful read. And then um, next, to get a clarifying card on this, I'm going to be pulling from, I guess animal spirit would be kind of cool to pull from, right? You haven't pulled from animal spirit in a while. All right. So here we go. What do we need to know about healing the mother line spirit? What do star seeds need to know? Welcome to everybody coming in. What do star seeds need to know about healing the mother line? Healing the mother line. What do star seeds need to know? What do they need to know about this maternal energy? Gotten good at shuffling. The gazelle, which is a peaceful, earthly energy associated with frolicking in the fields and seeing what comes next and just kind of being bouncy, harmonious, and joyful. Look into yourself. Have your inner child be hugged by that maternal loving energy that you need and continue on with that maternal energy. You guys know, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. We all know I just kind of mess around and like to have the fun associated with that. And if you don't like, if you don't like your rock and roll loud, you know what we say here to that. <laughs> Yes, it's happened. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's great to see everybody here. Um, we're finally waking up here. I have no idea how the StreamYard things thing. I see we got 27 people in the chat on YouTube on my app, and it's telling me there's only two people watching. I don't know if there's just two aliens watching through StreamYard or what's going on. But that doesn't matter. Good morning, UFO. It is March 7th, 2023, and it is another big, beautiful day of disclosure. Thank you so much to everybody who's joining me here in the live chat. If you could just do me a favor, if you could just like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share it on all of your favorite social media, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much to all of the family in the chat. Rock Estes here. What's up? Mindworks here. Good to see you. Just let me know that all the sound sounds good. You guys are the ones that, that hook it up. Um, and sometimes I get some, some new equipment and I want everybody to know that it's sounding good. And like I said this morning, I'm going to be tripping out just a little bit because stream yard screwing with me. But it's fine because we've got Diane here. <sighs> yes. They can't stop it. They want to repress. They want to repress it. They can't. So here's what happened. Here's, here's, here's what happened that's very interesting is yesterday I was all talking about on Twitter, right? And you guys saw the, you guys saw the, the thumbnail, obviously. The thumbnail is ridiculous. How did I get, how did I get, you know, a thumbnail of, a uh, of Stephen Green Street? Like it just, it was just so easy to create. It was beyond easy. What? Stephen Green Street sent us something? He sent us a clip. Stephen Greenstreet messaged me this morning and told me that he had a clip. He sent it to me. It's the clip of him asking Jeremy Corbell about this. So what are we getting into this about? Well, we can just let me know. Let me know if you hear any skips. I, mean, I have these new earbuds and I hear skips sometimes. Um, okay, but let's see here. UEP hearing. Dun, 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 dun. Mm, 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 mm. Raw. Raw footage. 
Because what happened was in the UFO hearing, they talked about, I don't know if you guys remember, I'm looking for the full, 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 full thing. It almost appears that it's it's difficult to address. But basically, it was in this hearing right here, and I'll share it with you guys, why this stuff was interesting. So in the UAP hearing, you guys probably remember that now that I'm, now that we're looking at it from this angle. In the UAP hearing, they said that the triangular bokeh UFOs, the pyramidal, the pyramidal, the pyramidal UFOs, okay, were whack. That they that they were not legitimate UFOs, and they had done analysis and said that they weren't. And it was interesting to me because there didn't appear to be very much reaction from Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp about their amazing pyramidal green UFOs. It's always a question. If you watch the show, I ask this question all the time. I'm like, wait, but the U.S. government in the UAP hearing, the only UAP hearing we've ever really had, um, they said that it was not UFOs. And that's fine totally fine because there's been plenty of things that have not been ufos right plenty of things um but the point that's interesting is it's almost like it keeps getting paraded around like yes we have the best footage in the world but i will say this the american government does gaslight people it does because gary nolan i mean he's got a great story about uap health effects they came out with the with that uh with that bill that came out or that thing the national defense authorization act of 2023 or four or something like that and in it they said that the ufos have never had any adverse health effects which is totally being gas let's gaslight anyway so i'm just here to report i'm just here to report on what i see and talk about so that being said we're going to be looking at I just wanted you guys to get this for reference. And now we're going to get into the other reference. Well, I guess I don't I don't really need to because Stephen Green Street sent me the video. Thank you, Stephen Green Street. So I don't know what could happen. Who knows? Maybe that's why StreamYard's breaking. StreamYard doesn't want me to have fun. But we're going to just, why not? Let's just jump into this video. Let's just jump into this video. This comes from Richard Cranar, uh, UFO, Richard Cranar YouTube channel. We're going to like it. Um, and we're going to put it on full blast here, full blast so we can hear it. And we're going to churn off the music so you guys can see what Green Street was talking about. We're also going to say that this is covered under fair use. It's meant to educate the public and provide commentary. Everybody go check out this channel. It's pretty sweet. So let's turn off the music and play the video. Thank you, Stephen Greenstreet, for making this me aware. I have a few questions for you. <laughs> uh, a few questions for you. Uh, the test one that I'm personally curious about is the brief So the, the briefing slide that Jay Stratton introduced with Green Triangle on it, uh, those have been demonstrated pretty clearly to have a focus of stars. Hold on, hold on, hold on, you can ask a question, but let's make sure because you're holding a microphone right now. Your opinion publicly right yes. here is that those have been demonstrated to be out of focus stars. That's your opinion, just to make sure we get that true. So now continue to the question. Okay, thank you. Um, and even Travis Taylor has come out and said that he believe that these are out of focus stars. My question being, what is, uh, what's, why so much restraint in the star uh, explanation in the briefing slide by Jay Stratton? Why, what do you have or what do you believe to say, no, this explanation doesn't make sense and something like flying pyramids makes more sense than out of focus stars? That's a good question. Couple of things. One is you'll hear it this afternoon from Jay Stratton um, that there's they have a lot more information that was uh, available behind the scenes that was made public. And I know that uh, Mr. Bray during that public hearing showed a, a video of something that was bogey on the East Coast and decided that, that proved that what was seen on the West Coast was the same thing. There's a rangefinder. They shot that off the deck of that ship. 
whatever that object was that was closest was 700 feet off the deck of the ship, not a star. If it had been okay, as was explained to me by the guys who studied it. Um, okay, before we continue on, I just really hope that you guys like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and put this all over your favorite social media, because I don't know if I should be playing this. I don't know if I'm allowed to. Um, no, that's just what I'm saying. I mean, let's get the let's get the viewership up because I think we might get in trouble for that. Because I don't think we're supposed to. I don't know. Commentary, blah blah blah. Was pretty cool huh guys so i want to know what you guys think let me get the liquid laser beam on that was interesting and i see the chat's on fire and i know we all have a lot of comments and that was covered by meant to educate the public blah 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 blah, blah. yes oh my gosh did she just say one question and if the convention isn't the time and place yes there was a lot of interesting things. Did you guys hear what he said at the end to Stephen Greenstreet? He said, um, he said, why? So you can quote me and put it on the internet or whatever. It's like, damn right. I'm a journalist. I'm Stephen Greenstreet. I'm going to be putting this in it. And thank goodness we're getting this out there. I'm glad that we got this raw footage to show you guys of how, of how Jeremy Corbell acts 
when asked with some of these questions. One of the questions that I think is really interesting that happened just now in this moment when we were watching this is Stephen Greenstreet asks him what does he think his opinion is about the bokeh. And he says, why? So I could just, why? So you can go put it in a newspaper, go review all the things I already said. And that's what I said about it. And then he takes it another, another, another step and says, but do you personally believe what you saw wasn't bokeh? And it appears that Jeremy took a, a step back and said, I leave that up to the U.S. government. What is it? It's interesting. Christian is here. What's up, dude? Christian says, what is Green Street up to? Don't get it. Do he think that George and Jeremy is on a special op? Um, you know, this is ufology. Everyone's a disinformation agent. Everyone's an alien. Everyone's, I don't know, a debunker. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's insane. Um, I, I mean, it's a good, it's a good clip. You have to admit, <laughs> I mean, this is why we named the show, um, Green Street versus Alien Con. I mean, it's a tough question, you know, and obviously one that did not want to be asked at, not one that wanted to be asked at this place. And I'm having podcaster symptom, podcaster number, podcast symptom, UFO symptom, podcaster number one which is tech issues. I'm having tech issues this morning. That never happens, really. Unless I'm talking about something big. But they still haven't broken us down yet. We're still moving. Even though it says one person's only watching through StreamYard. We got 40 people watching in YouTube. Um, so, so, I mean, you know, they also said you only get one question because Green Street wrote out, um, he wrote out, <laughs> Sorry, I'm just looking at my messages to Green Street. <laughs> We're so funny. You know, he just sent he just sent that clip and wrote enjoy. <laughs> that was all he sent. But he sent me that clip so we could play it this morning so you guys could see what it looks like, you know, so that you guys could see what was going down at this alien con when it was Green Street um talking to Jeremy and George Knapp who never really want to talk to him. Um, if there's one thing I guess I could say I really wish I could see at this thing, I would have loved to see I would have loved to see the debunker of Bob Lazar, Jeremy Reese, get up there and ask him some of the questions that I've heard Jeremy Reese ask. Um, and so that would be cool. So just to hear, I just think it's good when we get together as skeptics and we get together as believers and we have these conversations. Um, but I do want to notice that he did corner Jeremy Corbell. Jeremy Corbell was cornered right here. And George Knapp was cornered by, um, by, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, that's what Christian says. I like that Green Street asks, like, Mick West some good questions. We need more data. Questions shouldn't be scary. Are we really in that world where questions are scary? Half the show of doing this is about freedom, freedom of speech, the ability to talk about things, the ability to ask questions. Just because... I'm asking a question about a triangular UFO doesn't mean I don't believe that people have been abducted by aliens and that people have seen extraterrestrial craft in the sky. It doesn't mean that I don't believe that. It's just that I've got some questions and I have had some serious questions about these triangular UFOs like you have no idea. So when I heard that Green Street asked about the triangular UFOs, I was beyond happy, beyond happy. Um, so we're going to go through his little thing that he tweeted. Here you go. So, got look, see? If you guys want to sneak look, Stephen Greenstreet messaged me. Anyway. Alien girl got a message from Stephen Greenstreet. We're working hard here. We're trying to get to all the famous ufologists for you guys. All right, like, subscribe, share. I'll put this on all over your hashtag UFO tw Twitter. Um... So this is, this was transcribed. This is what we just watched and it's just transcribed. But what I want you to notice is we got part two right here. Okay. And I don't think this is what we heard. We didn't hear this part yet. Green Street. I was just curious what you thought. Um, and then he says, you only get a alien con security told him you only get one question. Do you see this? Alien Con security told him you only got one question, Stephen Green Street. Um, interesting. You know, I mean, 
Mind Forked has a great point. Why are questions bad? It was a panel. Isn't that the point of the panel? And I still want to know if that's Jeremy Corbell's personal opinion that the UFOs that are seen through that camera are 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 bokeh. Was that the specifics? Right? I want to go back. See, this is this is this is what was so fascinating about this stuff is it happened so fast. So fast. Um, to tell you what, this afternoon on a deeper here it sounds like the bokeh flying saucer. Does that make sense? Because there's a part here, you guys, where he asks him, and this is the important part where he corners him, and that's the part where I want to talk about. You know, and that's the thing. I mean, I think we should just be free to ask questions. I get in trouble because I ask questions, but like, screw it, you guys. This isn't some giant, you know, show, and we're like, no, it's it's a fun little show. We don't know what can happen. So every day we're asking the questions and, until something happens, you know, <laughs> like, I don't know, Christina Gomez woke up and her channel was gone I, a long, long time ago. I, you know, so I mean, me getting thrown to the side is nothing, right? Like Christina Gomez, ah, her channel, me, ah, nobody's going to give it. You, know, you guys will. But the point being is it's like, I don't, I don't know what could happen, right? So we're saying um, you only get one green screen. It was that he said the, in your personal opinion. Okay, so I think it's right here. Yeah, here you go. Green Street, thank you, Jeremy. So you believe that those are not stars in that slide, but flying, per flying pyramids? You personally believe that? Hmm. Give me a moment, my lovelies. I'm gonna look through the transcript on this. Control F, opinion. Uh, we're gonna find that. Here's the part. It's in this last minute, you guys. Let's watch this again. It's in this last minute. Here we go. When, do you believe that those are not stars in that slide that one here? Okay, so this is what I believe is the cornering. Do you believe those are not stars in the slides of the flying pyramids? This is when he corners him. This is right here. This is the cornering moment. This is the moment. It's 418. And the question is, is that slide but flying pyramids? Do you believe that those are not stars? This is what he says. Okay? So we're going to turn down the music just a wee bit. So you guys can hear it good. I'm checking in the chat, seeing how you're all doing. If you wrote opinion, repeat it when asked. Simple. Yeah, I mean, like, I shouldn't have to go through all of Jeremy Corbell's past videos to get an idea. You know, like, if that, if you've already stated it numerous times in numerous videos, why can't you state it now? Um, and you know what? The green triangular UFO thing's kind of a big deal. Because, like I said, the U.S. government, right here... The U.S. government said at the UAP UFO hearing that the green triangular UFOs that he gave to the public were not legitimate UFOs. Okay, so, and we're sitting here going to Alien Con, and we've got Stephen Greenstreet, a reporter at the New York Post, one of the primo UFO reporters in the country, honestly, um, and he's he's one of the few mainstream media reporters that are actually digging deep into this, asking tons of questions, which is why I, I love Stephen Greenstreet. I love listening to his work. I love what he comes up with. Um, just because I'm I, I'm I'm okay with things not being what I originally thought them to be, which is why why I'm into this. 
So this is the cornering question. So we're going to play that. You believe, I just want to know what you personally believe. This is the did you hear that? Why? So you could take some quotes, so you could put it in some magazine, or what? Or what? I always hate when people say that. Or what? Or what? Oh. Oh, poor Steven. He's like, whoa. Uh, there is, there is okay. I'm not sure that's true. Um, so basically, here's the deal. If you want to know what I think, you should just go and look at everything I've ever said about it. I am if you want to know what I've said, you should just go look at everything I've said about it. Why can't you just have a big conversation with the public? Is that so wrong, Jeremy? He's finally asking this investigative reporter who I've had questions to, this good investigative reporter. He's but he managed to get all the way to Pasadena, California to go to Elliot Climb. He stood front row to ask you my question. About the green triangular UFOs. Little alien girl had this question. And this journalist executed it at the top. And your response is go review all the videos. People are paying like, what, 500 bucks a seat to sit here and listen to you? Can you at least be a straight shooter? You know what I mean? Are you trying to sabotage me? Not, you know, right, right? That's kind of what Jeremy's, are you trying to sabotage me? Is that what you want, right? That's kind of what Jeremy's saying. We're not trying to sabotage you, Jeremy. We're just like, hey, bro, like, we noticed that the U.S. government said these weren't UFOs. You took them, you put them everywhere at the height of fear, at the height of COVID, told everybody you found triangular UFOs zipping around everywhere, and then the U.S. government took it back. I am not saying that the U.S. government isn't gaslighting Jeremy Corbell. Maybe he is. I don't know. But what's going on in this moment is I do believe it's... I do believe if we go and re-review the videos of Jeremy Corbell talking about it, there's this thing... If you're new to the world of deception, which ufology tends to be filled with, I don't know. Like I said, I might even get in trouble for this because I don't know how this will shake out. But showing this clip, that's what I'm saying. Like, subscribe, put this everywhere, guys. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not many people have this clip. I'm very excited. We kind of have, it's not really exclusive, but fuck it. Exclusive footage. <laughs> exclusive! Like, subscribe, put this on all over your social media. We got exclusive footage here straight from Alien Con. We're... This might be the last episode of Alien Girl, but I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, but the point being, with all of this, is why don't you go back and look at all the things I've said? Why can't you just be upfront? Okay? Like, here's this. I always like to use the, the analogy of... Um, of um cheating honestly i like to use the analogy of cheating right because there's different ways to cheat omitting information is a form of deception so if you say hey you know like this is omittance of information what's your opinion what's your opinion about the videos that you're pushing to everybody all over the world about your ufos <laughs> Exclusive footage that's on YouTube. I don't know if the guy was allowed to be in there filming this. That's what I'm saying. I don't... Not my fault. It wasn't me. No. I'll just... Who knows? Who knows? I think we're fine right now. Omitting information is deception, says uh, Dirty Mike. Yes, it is. Omitting information is a form of deception. Um, so... When he tells me that we should be going back and looking at his other interviews to get an idea as to what his opinion of are the green triangular, the thing about it is it's so easy to control. He's already been in other interviews where he's controlled the information. When there's Stephen Greenstreet raw ready to give him some serious questions about things, suddenly he can't answer a question. But like any other liar, cheater, whatever, they have it all locked down they have the story ready to go to execute to you I'm not saying that jeremy's a liar or anything like this i have a lot of respect for nap and corbell 
I do. But I do think that Knapp and Corbell need to be way more open about the information that they're giving, especially since they become the showmen of ufology all across mainstream media. These are the people they go to when they're asking for all of this information. But why? But what? What? Shouldn't like maybe like a Ben Hansen? I mean, like there's got to be fresh new blood. And a lot of it comes down to that one little domino. And what's that little domino? Bob Lazar. Damn it. It comes down to Bob Lazar. And one reason I've always had questions about George Knapp. I love George Knapp. He's cool. Whatever, right? He's an investigative reporter. Sure. But why was it that when he went and did some research with Stanton Friedman about Bob Lazar that he found information because I was being asked about him. I did some checking and found with the help of investigative reporter George Knapp at KTLA in Las Vegas that he was at the bottom third of his class on Long Island, had taken only one science class and had graduated in August, not with his class. Bob Lazar, George Knapp knew he graduated in the bottom of his class. He went with Stanton Friedman and figured it out. So here's some evidence right there that George Knapp is omitting I'm sorry I did that to you guys. I did. I did it to you. George Knapp's omitting information. <sighs> he is, guys. Look, there he is. Because I was asked about him, I did some fact-checking and found, with the help of investigative journalist George Knapp at KTLA TV in Las Vegas, that he was in the bottom third of his class on Long Island, had taken only one science class and graduated in August, not with his class, which most certainly indicates that he couldn't have been accepted at MIT, as they only take students in the top 10 or 20 percent of their high school graduating class and who have been studying many science classes. He omits that, doesn't he? Anybody notice that? He omits that. I think it's, uh, that's the one thing that gets me. Is if you're going to be going, pushing the Lazar, pushing it all. Just like, I like the Lazar story. A lot of people know what I think. I think Lazar is, um, I think the story is real. I think the story's real. I think the Bob Lazar story is a huge part of the Matrix that needs to be locked and put in there. And I think that George and Jeremy should give the public the respect they deserve and answer the questions about the educational background. That's what people have questions about. Throwing it down, we'd be George snapping it up. Ow! Whoa, I feel like a new woman. Do you guys ever feel that way after the Galactic Federation and entering it? Whew! Whew! Okay, let's get back to business. 
back to the UFOs. How's everybody doing? Everybody okay? You should a belly dancer outfit. No, 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 um, but yeah, okay, so, okay, whew, we are going all wild, and then, you know, we lost train of thought, but he, he cornered him, he cornered him, and thank you guys so much for being here this morning, this is a huge show, um, I love you all more than you could possibly do. Um, and like, subscribe, put this on all of your social media because, um, <laughs> Christian says, yes, I feel like a new woman, <laughs> new woman, um, <laughs> I'll do the belly cancer outfit, Amy, but okay. So here's the thing going on right now, guys, is this is whack. This is whack. Why should we go have to look up all the stuff he's used to talk about? Well, shouldn't we be able just to go and look up the stuff that like, can he just be, can he just say it? Right? Can't he just say it? You know what I mean? Can't he just say it? Like, what is his opinion? Because now I have to go look back at all the information. But the point being is omittance of information is deception. Um, and so if you're going to be the primo authority voice in ufology, you got to have some more stuff to back those claims. And I actually think you have to be totally transparent all right. I want my authorities in ufology to be just as transparent as as I can get the government to be. But it is an ugly, wild world of ufology on so many different levels of trying to get people to tell the truth. I just don't understand why you couldn't say, yeah, dude, it is my personal opinion that they were you know, UFOs and that they weren't just stars on a bokeh camera. That isn't a big deal. He took that pyramid footage and took it everywhere, all across the world, showing people that this was a UFO that he'd found. So not at all transparent, question mark? I don't, I don't, I don't know what your question is, Lynn. Let me know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, um, not at all transparent. I don't think so. No, I don't think he's being transparent when he's not talking about how he did this research with George when he George Knapp did this research with um, with Stanton talking about doing the research on his educational background. If it was me and I was George Knapp, I would be like, yeah, you know, I went with Stanton. We went and did some research on Bob Lazar's educational background. We found out he graduated in the bottom third of his class, but I still believe this to be true because like, I don't think that, you know what I mean? Extraordinary evidence needs extraordinary proof. Oh, okay, got it. You said you want the authorities in ufology to be as transparent as the government, hence. Yeah, I know. That's the problem with the show, right? It's like, I just talk, and then right when it came out of my mouth, I was like, I shouldn't have said that. That didn't make sense. I want my government to be totally transparent about... Do I want them to be transparent? That's a whole other thing. Like, because I think that secrecy is important, definitely, on some level. But I want my ufologists out there who are digging up the information to be able to respond decently with a good, you know, a good response. But it's ufology. It's ufology. There's a weird, weird world of ufology. Okay. This is great because Lynn's my friend, but we've got some opinions because, you know, we got friends. Like, we got friends who are friends with Bob Lazar. <laughs> all this worked in. So when you get on a screen and you start talking about this stuff, our network's very small. Everybody here, Stephen Greenstreet sent me this clip. Like, it's the world, the UFO world, to very much smaller. So I try to be as respectful, and that's like why it's important to go to the conferences, because there's no reason we all can't live on a level of respect and kindness as we're searching for this. So, okay. And Lynn and I have that, Alien Girl. But my question is, if the education is getting you, my question, if George knows that, why does he still believe Bob? Is there more we don't know? Well, that's what I'm saying, Lynn. I do think that there's more that we don't know about the Bob Lazar case. And I think George Knapp 
omits um, the information about him talking about his educational background because they're highlighting the points that they do think are true. And I do think that there is so much truth in the Bob Lazar story. I do. Bob Lazar corroborates by all sorts of different evidence on all sorts of different spectrums. A debunker can go in there and knock it down pretty damn fast. So a lot of people don't believe in Bob Lazar. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. I'm, I'm not saying I do or don't, but a lot of, and it's not that they don't. I'll say this. It's that they get confused about the educational background. And if George knows, why does he still believe Bob? He still believes Bob because it's probably true. Because the educational background for some reason doesn't matter. And that's fine, but I want to know why they evade the question about his educational background. And on the first episode of, like, Weaponized, Nap says, I'm quite frankly done with addressing any questions about his educational background. He's not going to talk to you about it. He's not going to talk to you about it. He's not going to talk to me about it. George Knapp isn't going to talk about Bob Lazar's educational background at all to any of us. And he researched it and found out he graduated in the bottom of his class. And that's weird to me. Why not just say, hey, graduated in the bottom of his class, you know, but I still believe Bob Lazar because this, this, and this. I believe Bob Lazar. I believe Bob Lazar too. But there's a serious holes for the Bob Lazar story that needs to be addressed. And if we're going to be talking about Bob Lazar going to Congress to testify, that makes no sense. Because there's so many questions about Bob Lazar right now. It makes no sense that Bob Lazar would go be questioned at the Hill because no one takes him seriously because they don't believe his educational background. That's why Bob Lazar is never going to be go testify in front of politicians because the politicians don't believe him because they can't. They, actually, they can verify the background because he went to Pacifica University, a fake university. All you got to do is go do the backtrack on the records and it becomes incredibly apparent that Bob Lazar <laughs> didn't really even go to school. He bought his degree from a mail order degree called Pacifica University. Nobody gives it. It's just the weirdest thing that everybody's like, ah, it's okay, Amy. He fixed education. Ah, forget about it. He said he went to MIT and Caltech, like most prestigious schools in the freaking country. And everybody, it's just weird to me that everybody's so okay with it. Okay, Lynn's gonna calm me down. Thank goodness you're a therapist too. Exactly. George has asked the question a ton of times. He still should answer, but he's probably tired of it because it doesn't matter for some reason. It does matter though. Like I, people, people don't trust him because he's not taught. Oh, Bob Lazar. Uh, you know, and that's the thing. People are like, you shouldn't care about Bob Lazar. It means nothing. It's actually, it, it actually is the perfect example of ufology. It's entertaining the fantasy of ufology. It's, it's it's omitting information to keep people on the bandwagon with what you're talking about. And I do be Bob Lazar. I do believe Bob Lazar in terms of the story. I have my own theories. But I just think that you got to put it all out there on the table. If you're going to say that we're working on a back-engineered extraterrestrial craft and you worked on a flying saucer, you should be willing to sit there and answer any questions. And... You should be going and testifying to the Congress, but they're not going to invite him. They're not even going to listen to him because any CIA background person who does a thorough investigation on the background of Bob Lazar, do some Google searches. It's obvious. Do I love Bob? Yeah, I think Bob's cool. Everybody pretty much here knows what my opinion is. It's on both because I do think we have worked on back engineered extraterrestrial crafts. I do. But at the same token, okay. At the same time that I believe that we've worked on extraterrestrial, back-engineered, reverse extraterrestrial, at the same token, I got questions about Bob. That's all I'm going to say. But the point being is, is you see this, you see this a lot, and I, you know, I, I, and it's fine. You decide who. Okay, here we go. Beats crates. Yeah, throw your opinions out there, guys. I want to know. I don't know everything. I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'm not. Um, and so Beach Crate says, I don't care about his schooling. We only want to know if it's true or not. So don't tell me it's all lies because he got 10 incher when it's really two inches. Oh my gosh, Beats. That's a little much. 
<laughs> I don't care about a schooling. We only want to know if it's true or not. So don't tell me it's all lies. Um, no, I don't think it's all lies. I don't. That's that's the point I'm trying to make. But if you're going to be peddling this to the general public, you need to you need to be able to tell the general public the answers to every single question you have. People aren't going to believe you. That's what's going to happen. And people don't believe them because they don't go and into depth about the background of Bob Lazar. Why in the world will Bob ever testify in front of the same government that worked against him to, since he first came out? I wouldn't. Yeah, you know, I just think a lot of people really do want him too. Why? Why would I just feel like if he could go make the Bob Lazar movie and do all that? Like, why not just go tell? I, and he's not gonna. <laughs> they're not gonna invite him anyway. That's the other thing. I don't think they're gonna invite him. I think the people on top know what's going on, <laughs> and I think they're like, ah, Bob. I don't know about his educational background. Yeah, I found this university he went to, you know, and it's not real. <laughs> like, it's as easy as that. I heard he went and wasn't real. University. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Usually I can contain this when I'm by myself and I'm like, he went to a fake university. How do they do that? I wouldn't let it get the best of me. Anyway, I love you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get emotional. I shouldn't. It's just ufology. But the point being is Green Street cornered him. Green Street cornered him. And if this is the last episode of Alien Girl, I hope you enjoyed it. We tried hard here. We're going to keep going until they shut us down. And the day they shut us down will be sad, you know, but you'll know we did our job. <laughs> Which is alternative media, bars none, nobody holding back, nobody telling us what to say. Um, if that gets us taken down, that gets us taken down. Uh, FAP is here to say hi to Lynn. <laughs> uh, Lynn says, think about it. How do you discredit someone in the 80s? Erase small tidbits of info to make them look like he's lying. Then the government can say, why should we talk to him? He's clearly lying. I don't think the documentation of him not going to specifically, that's not a lie though. There's like, a, there's documentation that he went to a fake university. Um, Cause he's got the fake mail order degree, right? Um, yeah, so then they would be like, he's lying. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, what's up, Tony? It happened, though. I, I, I do dislike Bob Lazar because he gives me a headache. Good morning, Chop. Good morning, Paranormal Chop Shop. And I just got so lit up. I forgot what time it was. It's 5.54. Wow. Wow, we're already in the last five minutes. Well, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who came this morning. We're not totally done yet. Okay. Tonight, I hope you decide to come. We're having a little party on my channel um, because we're going to be doing the full moon reading tonight. Um, full moon evening star seed reading starts at 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Um, and basically, it's kind of cool. I'm going to get the bowl out, the singing bowl, if you're into the woo. Um, we're going to ring the bowl. We're going to do... It's kind of cool to put all the lighting off. See, look, when you put all the lighting off. You can kind of, it's just kind of cool. Like you do this and then I'm going to get the bowl out. See, like, isn't that cool? And then like, so we could be in the darkness and I'm going to do this for like a while tonight, just like this. I'm going to do this for like, I don't know. I don't know how long I'll do it. I got a night off from my life. So we're going to be doing some bowl ringing. We're going to be doing some card reading tonight. Um, cause tonight is, is a full moon. So I hope you guys come and check that out. Cause that is going to be fun. <laughs> What's up Jeanette? Jeanette. Yep. Paper crane wishes is pinned to the top of the chat. That's, um, I'm doing, that's where I'm going to go trip out and do more bowl readings. But tonight we're going to do bowls. 
ringing and then we're going to do the star seed reading of the month because it's a full moon so we're taking in the full moon energy all day today so i hope you guys go tonight for our full moon reading and it's going to be happening right after rich ufon goes on and then we got more stuff coming your way including going live from roswell we're going to be at the ufo expo this weekend um we're going to be using a table Oh, is that the StreamYard link for you to come? Maybe I accidentally invited you guys to the StreamYard. That wasn't what I was trying to send. Anyway, I gotta I gotta head out, so I can't really take any more viewers. I don't know why I sent the, I don't know how I sent the StreamYard link out into the thing. Okay, so this is gonna be happening on Saturday, 3 to 5 p.m. We're gonna be streaming live. There's tons of people who are gonna be walking all over the conference floor, including James Fox, Tom Reed. I mean, that goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. So we're going to have a kick-ass stream from Roswell this weekend. So I hope you go check that out. But more than anything, come check us out tonight. Tonight for our full moon reading. That's what I wanted to put in the chat. I don't know what link I sent you guys. Here's the full moon reading for tonight. And that being said. Damn. I wonder, see, it's, we had 50 people in the chat and they still said, they still said that ridiculousness. I'm just like, you gotta be kidding me, man. You've gotta be kidding me. You know what I mean? He's around. He's around, smurfed. You guys. They couldn't get us this time. <laughs> How did you get here? George Knapp, Jeremy, you watching this? How in the hell of the YouTube algorithm did you manage to find yourself here? Yes, we're star seeds. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Yes, because we're star seeds here, guys. Because we're broadcasting here, live and alive, in the middle of the desert, in the heart of alien country. And one day, it's all going to come out. The bodies, the documents, the craft. And they're going to say, oh, maybe, you know what they're going to say. They're going to say that they always do. And you're going to say, no, man, I knew. Because I was listening to all of my friends. And I was also listening to Alien Girl. One, 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 your Tim Freestone, Haynes, Justin A.D. Maynard, Mind Fork, all of the moderators, all of the friends, all of the super chats, our David Bond. Because you guys, there's some crazy vibes going on. We don't know what they're doing out there. They're just messing around, telling us all sorts of things. Is Bob Lazar real? Is Bob Lazar fake? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just a girl. I'm just an alien girl doing my alien thing because they're going to say that you guys are crazy you have no idea what's going on but we know that is not living true yes Liz. and i love each and every single one of you more than you could possibly know congratulations 